Hey, Steve. One of my fondest memories was the night you won King of the Ring in Milwaukee. I remember the shock in the crowd when you beat Jake Roberts in the finals. The sympathetic figure Roberts gets beat by the badass Steve Austin. I also remember hearing about the trip to the emergency room you took during that pay-per-view. Can you recall the events of that evening, and did you ever think your promo would lead to such an iconic Austin 316 status? Thanks, Ryan. No, man, you know, I remember working with Mark Merrill uh, there in that first round match or second round match, whatever it was, and we had a pretty pretty decent match. And Mark Merrill was doing one of his moves, kicked me in the mouth, and uh, busted me open real good. Finally, you know, hit him with a stunner. This is before I had to uh, set up with a kick to the gut. Hit him with a stunner, one, two, three. I get on that turnbuckle, and I said, you fucking right. And uh, and I meant it. I know they had to, to fix that F word there, but, you know, I knew that my time had come. I had one more match to go, and I was going to be with Jake the Snake Roberts. But I was going to have to go to the hospital first, get my mouth stitched up. Uh, went to the hospital, came back. And as soon as I stepped out, Michael Hayes told me that Jake had cut a religious-based interview. And the match with Jake was really short because uh, they didn't want all the, the 14 stitches in my mouth to get jacked up or uh, infected or anything like that, torn out. So, yeah, I pretty much just kind of started working Jake's ribs, you know, unwrapped them. He had suffered a rib injury from working with Vader and softened him up for me. And... Question is, did you ever think your promo would lead to such an iconic Austin 316 status? Hell no. I didn't think, you know, beyond that night that it would ever resonate or would ever be brought up again because I didn't know if there was ever going to be a reason for that. But sure enough, when Jimmy Miranda, the old WWE merchandise guy, came up to me and said, Stephen, the office finally wants to do a T-shirt for you. Do you have any ideas? And I said, you got dang right I do. I said, I want to pick, I want Austin 316 on the front and a skull with Stone Cold carved in the back. So I got a t-shirt out of that. Austin 316 uh, is here forevermore. It's been here ever since 96. Hell, every March 16th, people start sending tweets about Austin 316 days. So it's still going strong. And as far as uh, I guess what I remember or recollect, is the number one selling t-shirt in the history of the wrestling business. So we sold a shitload of them. I had fun cutting that promo, and I had no idea that it would be so big. On another note, the what chant. Uh, I never knew the what chant would stick around as long as it's as it's stuck around. And it's, uh, it's quite interesting, actually. But uh, there is a way to avoid it when you're out there. But, yeah, sometimes it kind of gets on my nerves, too. But not really. I'm kind of laughing inside because I find it very entertaining that people still do that when people give them the pause on a promo. And people cuss me on Twitter because they're trying to listen to a promo or uh, one of the guys or girls is trying to cut a promo and be serious about the angle they're in. And they keep getting wadded out the building. So, yeah, it, it has its ups and it has its downs or its pros and cons. Uh, I never thought that would take off or last as long as...